the constellations. Images in the night sky our ancestors drew among the stars. They were used for navigation, fortune telling, and storytelling. Different cultures had their own constellations, but our modern ones, for the most part, come from the ancient Greeks. They believed the constellations were reminders of their great myths placed there by the gods. Ptolemy, a Greco-Roman astronomer, named 48 constellations in his seminal work, The Almagest. In modern times, the International Astronomical Union recognizes a total of 88 constellations. In this video, I want to tell the stories these constellations express. We're not going to go over every one. We'll focus on Ptolemy's 48, and we won't cover all of those either. You see, not every constellation has its own unique story, and many groups of constellations work together to tell larger stories. And knowing these stories can help you remember the constellations better and relate to the stars in a more meaningful way. This video is brought to you by my Patreon. If you'd like to support me in what I do, or if you'd like the perks that come from being a patron, go to patreon.com slash generalistpapers, or click the link in the description to join. Thanks very much, and now back to the video. We'll start off with the myth of Perseus. Perseus was a demigod, a son of Zeus, and one of the most celebrated Greek heroes. His constellation is best seen on nights in December, for the Northern Hemisphere at least. Sorry to my friends in the Southern Hemisphere, but I'll be discussing viewing these constellations from a Northern perspective. Perseus was most famous for slaying the snake-haired Medusa. Perseus, while expertly avoiding her petrifying gaze, decapitated her, and from her blood sprang Pegasus. Pegasus was a winged horse and son of the sea god Poseidon and Medusa. While Perseus, uh, released him by cutting off his mother's head, he did not in fact tame the horse, as is seen in some modern adaptations of the myth. Pegasus was instead tamed by a later hero named Bellerophon. The constellation Pegasus is best seen in October. Between Pegasus and Perseus in the sky is the constellation Andromeda. On his way back from killing Medusa, Perseus came across a terrifying sight. The Ethiopian princess Andromeda tied to a rock, waiting to be eaten by the sea monster Cetus. Perseus then killed the monster and rescued the princess, who he eventually married. Andromeda and Cetus are best seen in November, though luckily for Andromeda they are not in the same patch of sky. The next two constellations are Cassiopeia and Cepheus. They were the queen and king of Ethiopia, respectively, and also mother and father to Princess Andromeda. You see, Cassiopeia had bragged that her daughter was even more beautiful than the Nereids. This enraged the sea nymphs, as well as Poseidon, who sent Cetus to destroy Ethiopia, unless Andromeda was sacrificed to the monster. Cepheus, reluctant, but pressured by his subjects who very much did not want to be destroyed by a giant sea monster, agreed to sacrifice his daughter. And it was then that Perseus saved Andromeda and defeated Cetus, winning Andromeda's hand in marriage. Cassiopeia is one of the easiest constellations to see and identify. Like Andromeda and Cetus, she is best seen in November. Look for her five brightest stars that create a W or M shape. Cepheus is just west of his wife, assuming she is in her M formation. So those are the six constellations as part of the Perseus myth. Perseus himself, Andromeda, Cassiopeia, Cepheus, Cetus, and Pegasus. Next we have the story with the most constellations in it, the myth of Hercules. Hercules was the greatest and most celebrated of all the Greek heroes. He, like Perseus, was a son of Zeus. He's most famous for his 12 labors, the 12 labors of Hercules, tasks given to him by the king Eurystheus. Some of these labors are represented in the constellations. First we have Hercules himself. As I said, he was a son of Zeus and a mortal woman named Alcmene. Hera, the queen of the gods, was rightfully angry at Zeus's constant infidelity. 
and took out her frustration, not on Zeus, but on his son. Therefore, Hercules' life was constantly threatened and made difficult by an angry Hera. The Hercules constellation is best seen in the summer, in July. Now we move to the Twelve Labors. For context, Hercules had married a woman named Megara, and had two children with her. Hera, who just couldn't let go of a grudge, made Hercules lose his mind, and in a state of temporary insanity, Hercules killed his wife and children. Terrified and distraught at what he had done, Hercules prayed to Apollo, the god of prophecy, and the oracle of Delphi told Hercules to work for King Eurystheus for 12 years as punishment for his crimes. So we come to the first labor, to slay the Nemean lion. It is represented by the constellation Leo, our first of the 12 zodiac constellations. Around the town of Nemea, there was a lion terrorizing the countryside. Many tried to slay it, but its coat was as hard as bronze, and no sword or arrow could pierce it. Hercules similarly saw that his arrows did nothing to the beast, so he chased it into a cave and there strangled the lion to death with his bare hands. Hercules is often depicted wearing a lion's skin, though it's unclear if this was from the Nemean lion. Leo is recognizable by this sickle shape in the sky, and it's best seen in April. Hercules' second task was to slay the Lernian Hydra. The Hydra was a bog monster with nine heads and fatal venom. Hercules tried to bash the monster's heads with his club, but each time one head was smashed, two more grew back in its place. To make matters worse, Hera sent a giant crab to nip at Hercules' ankles and slow him down so he would be killed by the Hydra. The plan failed, as Hercules smashed the crab quite easily. Hercules eventually found that he could burn and cauterize the wounds of the Hydra, making it so that no new heads would grow. He called upon his nephew Aeolus, who was his companion on this journey, to burn the severed necks after he killed each one. Hydra and Cancer, the giant crab, were placed in the sky together by Hera. Both are best seen in the spring around March and April. As I said before, not all the labors are remembered in the constellations, so we have to skip a few to get to our next constellation. Hercules' seventh labor was to capture the Cretan bull. You see, the king of Crete, Minos, had promised Poseidon he would sacrifice whatever animal Poseidon sent him. The sea god sent a huge bull to Crete, but Minos thought it so beautiful that he sacrificed a different animal instead. Poseidon was furious at King Minos' broken oath, and made the bull run rampage through the island. As further punishment, the sea god made Minos' wife, Pasiphae, fall in love with the bull, and from their union, the Minotaur was born, who would later be killed by the Athenian hero Theseus. Anyway, Hercules was easily able to capture the bull and bring it back to King Eurystheus. The bull is represented by the constellation Taurus, another of the 12 zodiacs, and can be best seen in January. The 11th labor was to fetch the apples of the Hesperides. The apples, nor the tree they grew from, are depicted in the stars, but two events that happened on Hercules' quest for the apples are First, Aquila, the eagle, and Sagitta, the arrow. So, some more background. There was once a titan named Prometheus, who was punished by Zeus for stealing fire from the gods and giving it to mankind. His punishment was to be tied to a rock and have his liver eaten every day by a giant eagle. On the journey to find the Garden of the Hesperides, where the golden apples grew, Hercules came across Prometheus tied to his rock. Hercules, feeling bad for Prometheus, shot the eagle down with an arrow and freed Prometheus. The titan was so grateful that he told Hercules how to get to the apples. The eagle Aquila and the arrow of Hercules, called Sagitta, were put in the sky by Zeus. Both can be seen best in the month of August. The quest was not over, however. The apples were guarded by the Hesperides. 
nymphs who were the daughters of the Titan Atlas, the one who holds up the sky, and by a hundred-headed dragon named Ladon. In one version of the myth, Hercules tricked Atlas into getting the apples for him. This version doesn't really mention the dragon as a factor though, so we'll go with the alternate version that sees Hercules killing the dragon and taking the apples himself. Laid on the dragon is represented by the constellation Draco. It can be best seen in July. So those are the constellations in the Hercules myth. Hercules, Taurus, Leo, Cancer, Hydra, Draco, Aquila, and Sagitta. We have two more minor myths to go over now. The first is the myth of Jason and the Argonauts, and the second, Orion the Hunter. Jason himself is not counted amongst the stars, but two of his companions, as well as other parts of his myth, are. We'll start with the Argo itself, the famous ship that Jason and his Argonauts sailed to find the Golden Fleece. The Golden Fleece was the skin of a golden ram named Chrysamelus. It was said to have magic powers of protection, and Jason was sent to fetch the fleece by his uncle, King Peleus, to prove Jason was the rightful king of Thessaly. The Argo is the largest classical constellation, so large in fact that it was broken into three distinct constellations, Carina, the keel, Puppis, the stern, and Vela, the sails. All three can be best seen in March. Chrysomelus, the golden ram, is represented by Ares, one of the zodiac signs. It can be best seen in December. Jason rounded up a crew of heroes to help him on his quest, including Hercules. Another two Argonauts were Castor and Pollux, known collectively as the Dioscuri. The Dioscuri were actually very popular heroes in ancient Greece, often worshipped as gods. Castor was the mortal son of Tyndareus, the king of Sparta, and Leda, his wife. Pollux, however, was the son of Zeus and Leda. You see, Zeus, ever the promiscuous god, wanted to sleep with Leda, and so he transformed himself into a swan and seduced her. But she was already pregnant with her husband's child. Therefore, while Castor and Pollux were twins, they were actually only half-brothers. Yeah, Greek mythology is wild. Cygnus the Swan constellation represents Zeus in his swan form, and Gemini represents the Dioscuri. Cygnus can be seen in September, and Gemini in February. One last constellation in the Jason mythos. Jason, before his quest, was tutored by the centaur Chiron, who is the wisest and best of the centaurs. He is represented by Sagittarius, one of the zodiac, and he can be best seen in August. So those are the constellations that relate to the myths of the Argonauts. The Argo, Ares, Gemini, Cygnus, and Sagittarius. Orion is one of the most noticeable constellations in the sky, but most don't know his story. He was one of the giants, a race of people in Greek mythology that had great strength, though weren't necessarily of great size. He was a renowned hunter, so renowned that Artemis, goddess of the hunt, who did not usually associate with men, enjoyed hunting with him. Orion, however, made a mistake. The classic mistake that all Greek heroes make, boasting of his prowess. He stated that he was such a great hunter that he would hunt and kill every beast in the world. Gaia, mother of all creation, took issue with this statement and so sent a giant scorpion to kill him. It succeeded, and Artemis placed Orion in the sky as a constellation, along with Canis Major, his hunting dog, and two animals for him to hunt forever, Canis Minor, the fox, and Lepus, the hare. The scorpion was also placed in the heavens as Scorpius, another of the zodiac. Orion and Lepus can be best seen in January. Look out for these three stars called Orion's Belt. Canis Major and Minor can be seen best in February, and Scorpius in July. The constellations don't just represent images or tell stories. They can connect us with people long past. When you have a moment, find a place with little light pollution and do yourself the favor of looking up. And realize these same stars have been inspiring us, guiding us, 
and amazing us for thousands of years. Well, that's it for this video. If you like it enough, I might do a sequel. There are lots of other constellations to go over. I mean, I didn't even talk about all 12 zodiacs. Do me a favor and hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't. Also, if you want to help out the channel, please consider donating to my Patreon. The link's in the description. Bye!